Now, before starting the video, I'd like to talk about the sponsor of this video keys fan. Keysfan.com offers cheap and legal OEM software keys in a simple and reliable way. You can quickly activate software like Windows and Microsoft Office using these 100% official keys, which are fully compatible with online activation. Moreover, they provide lifetime after sales support along with 24 by 7 customer service. Right now, their software super deals are live, so don't miss out. Upgrade your software at unbeatable prices with Keysfan. Simply add the product you need to your cart and catch 50% discount for Windows Series with RTG 50. 62% discount for Microsoft Office and bundles with RTG 62. Don't forget to check the description for more details. What's going on, everyone? It's RGB Tech back here again. Finally, after a long time, we have a new major update for the GameHub Fusion Windows emulator on Android. In today's video, I'll be showing you the best settings and test it. So here we have a new update pop-up for version 2.0.6. In this update, they've made a lot of changes and fixed several issues. They addressed UI bugs that occurred in certain scenarios and added a pop-up prompt to prevent inaccurate entries into the PC emulator, cloud gaming, or other sections, which could previously cause unresponsive controls. They also fixed an issue where downloaded games would repeatedly re-download. Yeah, that's true. And they've optimized the speed of importing games from Steam. Additionally, they've added a VRAM limit option for the PC emulator. Another major fix is for a path conversion issue that caused failures when launching games like GTA 4 and others. And finally, they've improved the UI for foldable screens, which sounds great. Next, let's go to the game section. Here, I'll also import GTA 4 into the library for testing. In the previous update, the game used to crash frequently, but now let's see how it performs. All right, let's start by testing GTA 5. Head over to its settings and set the preferred game resolution. I've set it to 720p. The DirectX HUD is set to simple. Incompatibility. Wine 9.5 is already selected. The turnip driver version is set to 25R5 based. For Snapdragon 8 Elite users, choose 8 Elite driver, or if you're using the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 or Gen 2, you might want to try Adreno drivers 76210 or 805. They've also added a VRAM limit option so I'll set it to the maximum. The core limit is set to all cores. Box 64 version 0.32 or 0.28 both are stable, so you can use either. Everything else remains the same. They also fixed some virtual controller bugs in the emulator. Now, let's go back and tap Play Now. I'll also turn off Wi-Fi and enable enhanced processing for a performance boost. If it seems stuck, don't panic. It will load fine. In the settings, the frame limit is set to maximum, and super resolution is enabled, same as usual. And there we go, guys, it's loaded. The GPU usage is around 70%, with a power draw of 8 watts on 720p settings. We're getting a much more stable FPS on the Snapdragon 888. The temperature looks normal, as I'm using a cooler for it. Now, let's test it at native max 1080p resolution. All right, now the GPU usage is almost 90%. The turnip driver version 25R5 build actually works great and provides better stability compared to the older driver 24. Now, let's do a benchmark test at this native resolution. All right, guys, now it's time to test GTA 4. In this update, they've fixed crash and launch failure issues, so let's get into it. The resolution is set to 720p, VRAM limit is set to 3 gigs, and Box 64 version 0.28 is selected, as this game relies on 32-bit translation. I'm also using Turnip Driver 24.2 R22 build. These are the best recommended settings. And it's loaded, guys. Let's set graphics to low 720p. 
V-Sync is off, and in the performance section, set frame limit to 120. HDR and super resolution are enabled. Now, let's see. And look at this, guys. We're getting 60 FPS in the cutscene, of course. That's expected. Let's skip ahead. As you can see, we're getting around 30 to 35 FPS, even reaching 40 FPS at times. You might notice some frame drops in certain areas, but overall, it's really good. This update has fixed major issues, and the game actually runs well, offering better FPS performance than when later. This is one of my favorite games, especially because of the car physics while driving. If you lower the resolution to 768p or 600p, you'll get even higher FPS. Performance has definitely improved, especially in stability. I'd also recommend using a phone cooler to avoid overheating issues. Anyway, that's all for this video, guys. Hope you liked it. Make sure to subscribe. This update really made a difference. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.